When Czech car maker Tatra rolled out the T87 in 1936, it was the avant-garde of automotive design. It embodied the new vehicular philosophy of the already well-established company. The steel body was self-supporting and aerodynamic. The engine was air-cooled and rear-mounted. At a time when most cars still looked more like coaches, the T87 triggered an automotive revolution. Tatra collector Ulrich Platzek recalls the first time he ever saw a T87. It was not far from the former Tatra plant. His father was the founder of the German Tatra Club. Every year before the season began, they would drive to the plant in Kopranica. They took the opportunity to look over the cars the club there owned. He walked into an old barn, and the first thing he saw was the rear of a T87. He didn't know what it was, but he said to himself, I've got to have this car. The progressive design was the work of Hans Ledwinka and Erik Überlacher. Ledwinka was an Austrian engineer and a brilliant designer who had worked for Tatra since 1921. Ledwinka's credo was lightweight construction and aerodynamic design. It broke with all the automotive conventions of the time. Now it looks a bit like something from the 1930s science fiction series. Spats over the rear wheels and the long sloping rear were an early attempt at streamlining. The striking fin down the back helped to stabilize the car at high speeds. Large air intakes kept the wind flowing over the engine and back with the hot air escaping through slits in the rear lid. But it took a bit of practice to get used to handling this rear heavy car, especially on wet pavement or at high speeds. Driving expertise was essential. Ulrich Platzek confirms that the T87 fishtails all too easily and unexpectedly. There's no warning of any kind. The car may be speeding along at a good clip and all of a sudden, off it goes. The cause is the T87's poor weight distribution. The two and a half liter rear mounted engine had a light magnesium alloy block but still, it lay heavy on the rear axle. The V8 overhead cam was common among racing and high-performance cars of the time. Even with an output of just 75 horsepower, the aerodynamic T87 still reached top speeds close to 150 kilometers per hour. In contrast to the body, the interior appeared quite conventional, aside from a few Art Deco touches. Even with such a complete array of instruments, the Tatra was easy to operate. The sight lines were generous through the big windshields, as long as the driver was looking straight ahead. Another feature unusual for the 1930s was the manual sliding roof. The trunk in front carried two spare wheels. Good to have along, given the bad roads of the time. The Tatra T87 was high-end avant-garde. So much so that only 3,000 were ever built. Surviving communism, the Tatra company produced cars until 1998 with rear-mounted V8 engines to the very end. <laughs>